the Assembly do now adjourn. Ms Chain. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and what a year it's been. It's too difficult to reflect on everything that's made this year what it is, so I'll just be reflecting on a, a few things that have really made an impression on me, but it's particularly meaningful for the two of the issues I'm reflecting on today actually has turned out to be an historic day. Today, a law for marriage equality passed the Federal Senate following an incredible, clear, positive vote two weeks ago to this day. There is one more important step to go, but what happened today alone is momentous. I know I've come into this place on the back of so much work by previous Labor governments, and it's especially humbling in this year to be part of this government that has led the way in uniting the city and in uniting this country <coughs> in such an important vote to finally see marriage equality. And today, Madam Speaker, Victoria became the first jurisdiction in Australia to legislate for voluntary assisted dying. And this is an incredibly important issue to me, but the issue of end-of-life choices was incredibly important to my predecessor, Mary Porter, too. I'm proud to continue this work and of the attention I, together with the support of my Labor and Green colleagues, have brought to the issue this year. And I promise to keep working on this. And Victoria's legislation is important for pretty obvious reasons. But one of the reasons it's so important is that it further underlines how ridiculous it is, how unacceptable it is, how inexcusable it is that the federal parliament allows legislation to continue to operate, which restricts the right of the ACT to determine its own policy in this area. Madam Speaker, in my inaugural speech just under a year ago, I said continuing to have conversations is critical in this job, whether letters or at stalls or just on Facebook. And I get more correspondence each day than I can keep up with, which is a happy problem. Um, and I remain committed to keep personally replying to each person who takes the time to write to me. The problems that we help solve each day, day to day, really are the bread and butter of being an MLA. And it's through a street store that I had one of the most meaningful and fulfilling interactions this year. In, I think, April, I met Cherie, who didn't have a job, and in fact, she hadn't worked for a very, very long time. And she approached me for help in finding a job. And frankly, Madam Speaker, I had no idea what to do. I wasn't sure if I would be able to help her, but I promised her that I would go down every avenue. I believed in her, Madam Speaker, and after a few dead ends, which I will acknowledge, I um, managed to encourage Cherie to apply for the Gin and Dairy Spark childcare program. And the long of the, sh of the short of the long and the short of it is that she did, and I'm so so proud to report that Cherie kept in touch throughout the program every few weeks. Uh, that she graduated from that program earlier this month, and she has found employment. We have a lot to be proud of in this place, Madam Speaker, especially as a government, but Cherie's journey will always hold a special place for me. There's an enormous amount of people who helped me be an effective local member, and I'd like to particularly acknowledge everyone within the Office of the Legislative Assembly for their support and for fielding my weird and wonderful questions, and I especially wish Max all the best in his retirement. Thank you to my colleagues uh, throughout this chamber for working largely collegiately and making it an interesting place, uh, especially in committees. And I'll also single out my fellow whips and you, Madam Speaker. Uh, clearly, I've spent too much time with you all as I've grown rather fond of everyone. To my staff, Maddie, Josh, Manuri, Gemma, intern Jacob and work experience student Andrew, you are the brains and uh, the patience behind the Tara Chain operation. You really do make all the difference, and I couldn't ask for a better or more supportive team, and for you to have had my back throughout this year has meant the world. And finally, thank you to the constituents of Ginandera. As I said in my inaugural speech, it is enormously, enormously humbling to be a representative of the home I love so much in the city I love so much. It remains an honour and a privilege to be here, and there is more work to do. Thank you. Question is the